1984, Apple released the original Macintosh computer. It was incredibly innovative, and it has since gone on to be of legendary status and one of the most iconic computers ever made. But using one nowadays, you would be hard pressed for it to do anything actually useful. As Steve Jobs has said himself, This is a field where one does one's work and in 10 years it's, it's obsolete and really will not be usable within 10 or 20 years. That was 30 years ago, and the Macintosh turned 40 this year. So of course, I bought one, it was broken unfortunately, and having used it as my nightstands for a couple of months, I started to come up with an idea for breathing new life into this icon of computer design. For the old computer to actually be useful again, I came up with two goals for this project. First of all, I was gonna have to replace the old black and white CRT display with something more modern. And second of all, I wanted to install a small computer to act as a home server inside the old case. But before we get to any of that, I first needed to disassemble the whole computer. This was a little terrifying as the CRT displays used in these things can hold high voltages that can kill. So don't do this at home kids. I watched a ton of videos on safe disassembly before diving into this and I was a little scared. But after discharging the CRT, it should be safe to touch. I also found the reason as to why this thing didn't work anymore, but that was that. Everything came apart pretty easily, the only thing that was annoying was a bit of corrosion on the chassis. I then got to cleaning, this was in preparation of a process known as retrobriting, where you bleach old electronics in attempt to restore the yellow plastics to their former glory. I used this wire brush to try and remove some of the corrosion from the chassis, and it worked so well I even took some stain off of my parents' outdoor table. The retrobriting method I used was pretty simple. You just submerge your entire plastic body in water mixed with hydrogen peroxide and let it sit in the sun for a time. For me this took around 8 hours, but I also don't live in the most sunny of countries. I used these old weights from a grandfather clock to keep the case from floating above the water surface. You may also notice all these plastic bottles. I used those to fill up volumes so the hydrogen peroxide solution would be stronger. Now that the case was finished, I could get started on the monitor for this build. I found this iPad 3 display on AliExpress for somewhat cheap, and it had almost the same size as the old display. It was 4x3 and it had a great resolution. But mounting it, I was going to have to be a little creative, because the CRT display that was in there before had a curved glass at the front, while the new LCD was totally flat. Thankfully, I was not the first person to stumble into this problem, and Stephen Lulz on Thingiverse had already come up with a solution. He had made a bracket that on one side perfectly followed the curvature of the CRT display, and on the other side was totally flat. Then it was as easy as printing it on my 3D printer and screwing on the bracket. The monitor part of this build was finished for now, and it was time to move on to the computer slash home server part of the build. I got this decommissioned Lenovo Think Center for free, and it was just the right size to fit into the old chassis. The PC did not come with a power supply, so I was a little creative and soldered the barrel connector onto the motherboard so I could use my own. For the PC's I.O. and power button to be accessible, I was going to have to cut a hole in the back of the case. This I only had one shot at doing correctly. I used a tiny saw and grinded at it for quite a while. The square hole turned out pretty crooked and it might be a little bit too large. I do somewhat fix it later on. I also chose to remove and paint the front panel of the server a more fitting beige color. Now for this whole thing to come together, I had to figure out a way to mount the electronics. I chose to mount it all on the chassis, as this way no cables would be attached to the backside and therefore opening and closing the case would be somewhat easy. I printed off this little right triangle bracket that would sit flush with the back side of the case and would have all the extra I.O. on it. This was my first time trying to assemble it. While it was missing a couple of features, I just wanted to see if it would actually work. And it booted right up without a problem. It was very satisfying seeing it work and that the proof of concept was there. I still had two more things I wanted to do though. I printed up a new and improved I.O. bracket for this. The server did not have Wi-Fi, so I was gonna have to use an Ethernet extension cord to get it to work. And secondly, I wanted to be able to use the display as a second monitor for my main setup. For this, I found this cool HDMI module that I used to switch between the server and an external source. To access the new I.O., I would need to make more holes in the back of the Mac. This time I used a triangle file on my Dremel to cut out the holes, and it proved to be a lot more effective. Buying everything up in the end proved to be a bit of a headache, but in the end, it was worth it. And that is it. This project took quite a while to do, but it is satisfying to finally finish a task like this. Here I have it plugged into my desktop. The building computer can run a Plex server in the background where I can watch all my various movies. I use a program called Rainmeter to run some desktop widgets so I can have some sort of dashboard running on it. I've been using it as a second monitor for a little while now and it works wonders for my needs. I can easily put up a live stream on it while I'm doing something else or look at lecture slides while I'm writing on the main monitor. In the end, I think it's ultimately a novelty. 
You could easily buy a second monitor that is bigger and better and plug that into both your desktop and server, but I personally think doing it this way adds a lot more character. This might also be more of a personal preference, but I also don't really like to be surrounded by giant screens like you see in some setups. So for me, this seems like a perfect solution. This project didn't totally go as planned. There are two features that I wanted, but did not go in the final build. First of all, I wanted to mimic the curved glass of the CRT display, so I bought this nice acrylic plate and melted it over the CRT to create the curvature, which surprisingly worked well. But I also found that it created a lot more screen glare and basically turned the monitor into a mirror when on a black screen. So I decided that it was not worth it in the end. I would also wanted to use an HDMI switcher to choose between the two sources, but this did not work due to my own incompetence in soldering. This just goes to show that not everything in a project like this works like you had wanted it to. And that's okay, because now you learned something from it. Thanks for watching.